Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2020 career mode for the Monaco Grand Prix today. Uh, always going to be a tough race here on uh, the narrow streets uh, of this very small country, but we will uh, see uh, what we can do, make the most uh, of the car pace that we do have. Uh, on that topic you'll see uh, we are actually ahead of McLaren and Renault, the fifth fastest team in Formula 1 right now, so uh, we have a decent chance of regular points uh, these days. So uh, we'll see what we can do in qualifying as we go through Q1. We uh, whack the inside wall at the Nouveau Chicane, send ourselves into a spin. That's guaranteed to happen at some point uh, in any given uh, Grand Prix weekend in Monaco. So uh, we've gotten that out of the way uh, very early on. We did go on to set a more representative time and uh, we do get through into Q2. Uh, in 13th position, Kvyat up in 11th, so we have some decent pace. Uh, it would seem Esteban Ocon, Romain Grosjean, Kimi Raikkonen, Nicholas Lissifi and George Russell knocked out. Russell will be starting from the last uh, position on the grid. Very unfortunate uh, for the Brit. But uh, we move on into Q2 and we'll see what uh, we can do in this session. And uh, let's just hope that uh, we can get through into Q3 and uh, secure that track position. The track position that is oh so important uh, around this circuit and uh, the first part of this lap seems to be coming together reasonably well and uh, we missed the apex there at the uh, Mirabeau uh, just slightly but uh, again uh, at the lowest hairpin but uh, as long as we can keep the uh, sort of rolling speed up uh, it shouldn't cost us too much time but uh, there's so many low speed corners here that you really don't want to be, don't want to be making too many mistakes but uh, anyway, across the line to uh, finish our lap in Q2, and we do thankfully get through uh, up in P4. So very good pace for us uh, in that session, despite a few uh, small mistakes. Obviously, they weren't uh, particularly costly. The swimming pool section uh, was uh, quite good uh, on that lap, and uh, that's typically a place where I lose a lot of time. So uh, when, when the lap comes together, uh, we're on the pace, but... Uh, the consistency around this circuit is uh, absolutely awful. Kafiat uh, down in 11th place getting knocked out there unfortunately uh, for him. But uh, we move on now uh, to Q3 and we'll see what we can do in this session. We've already set a banker lap and we'll go out again now to uh, set a uh, better one uh, if we can through uh, to back and swimming pool section trying to push the limits uh, as much as I dare. Cutting the corner a little bit there, as uh, you can uh, tend to get away with it a little bit. And uh, now uh, through Larascas and Anthony Nose for the final time. We'll see uh, what we can do in qualifying. Where will we start the Monaco Grand Prix as we come towards the line? P5. I will take that any day of the week. And with qualifying complete... Let's review our top three today. Hamilton, Bottas, and Max Verstappen. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. And uh, I was actually a bit shocked by that. We did out-qualify Albon just barely, uh, as well as Ricardo. But uh, it makes sense. We're faster than the Renaults, and uh, we're not uh, terribly far ahead of them in overall time. A few hundredths of a second uh, is all that separated us. So uh, we didn't really outperform the car. Uh, Albon just uh, did not get the most out of that session. Neither did, neither did Sebastian Vettel or either of the racing points who are both uh, a long, long way off the pace uh, to where they would have been uh, expecting. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that is uh, how qualifying unfolded. Let's get into the race. Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world famous Monte Carlo Casino, first opened in 1863. And, of course, a certain road race, first held here in 1929. There's no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two-mile-long Circuit de Monaco. The cars climb around 40 metres up through Beau Rivage, onto the casino, and then descending down towards the harbour through Sector 2. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of the 19 corners here, 7 to the left and 11 to the right. There's one single DRS zone as well, so don't expect that to make overtaking any easier today. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk briefly about Lando Norris. There's a new gearbox in the back of that car, which means a grid penalty, and hopefully some excitement as they make their way through the field. Fingers crossed that's one failure they won't have to worry about today, at least. There's not much of a silver lining to starting down the field with a penalty, 
but I think they'll be able to make some of that back up over the course of the race. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, The Scientist, and Albon, Ricardo, Vettel, Perez, and Lance Stroll, Fiat, Sainz, Kevin Magnussen, and Giovinazzi, Grosjean. Raikkonen, Lando Norris, they've taken a grid penalty. And Nicholas Latifi, Russell, and Esteban Ocon rounds off the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. We'll hopefully be aiming for a little more than a top 10. The strategy will be soft tyres that we qualified on to either a set of mediums or hards, and... Uh, I looked long and hard at this to try and decide which strategy uh, to go for uh, on the uh, default uh, setting. Uh, it says me, uh, the hard tyres will work, but uh, on the uh, custom one for us, uh, they won't because uh, the tyre wear uh, apparently is higher than expected for us. So uh, this could be uh, a difficult race for us towards the end, but uh, we'll see what we can do. We're going to try the hard tyres as uh, we get ready to go to the five red lights and away we go for the monaco grand prix it's a good start for us versus leclerc and verstappen we have a little look to the inside but there's no space there and we end up just giving ourselves a very tight line into the first corner now ricardo is around our outside as bottas and hamilton uh, have been uh, scrapping away for the lead i think bottas uh, got the advantage there but uh, we've lost out to daniel ricardo on the start we're down into sixth position and ricardo has uh, gained one to become uh, the best of the rest effectively behind uh, the uh, Mercedes and uh, the Sol, Red Bull and Ferrari. But uh, there you go, Valtteri Bottas uh, rounding the hairpin in first position. So it's a great start for him from P2 on the grid to take the lead. So uh, as we move on though to lap four uh, of the race, we are under pressure slightly from the cars behind Albon is behind us, he's given us a hit there at the apex going into the uh, Nouvelle Chicane to the front wing of the car. and uh, now he has damaged his front wing uh, here is the onboard with Albon and uh, he has a little look to the inside, backs out and then goes for it again at the last minute and that gap was just never going to be there at that point and uh, Albon has smashed his front wing and any chance he had of points in this race he's going to get uh, stuck in traffic he's going to have to make a stop now Perez gets involved in it as well he had no uh, nowhere to go, no time uh, to react. Sebastian Vettel uh, was next in line and uh, by the time the, uh, he gets there uh, the uh, incident is resolved but uh, yeah uh, Albon in the pits to get a new front wing as is Sergio Perez and they are both uh, out of contention in this race so uh, very very unfortunate to, uh, for both of them uh, Albon uh, or Perez just getting up uh, caught up in Albon's mistake there but uh, soon after that, actually decided to make a pit stop uh, of my own for uh, a set of hard tyres to run to the end uh, because the soft tyres were overheating so badly. I just had absolutely no pace. And uh, yeah, I just decided to uh, bring it into the pits and we'll see what we can do uh, on these hards and get an undercut. Strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. Uh, on the cars ahead or uh, at the very least just uh, running clean air for a while because I just was not enjoying uh, those soft tyres at all uh, whatsoever so uh, we'll uh, try and uh, make the most of this but uh, it uh, takes a little while but we eventually catch up to uh, the Williams of George Russell at the back of uh, the field we are still ahead of uh, Albon and Perez as uh, they had to make front wing changes so we did get past George Russell there and we go up the inside of Ocon at the Lowe's hairpin and that is very very tight on the right hand side there but we do make the move on Esteban Ocon and uh, he had to be uh, very cooperative there and uh, we'll see uh, a replay of that and uh, yeah we just uh, took the opportunity he was caught up uh, behind uh, Latifi and a few others up ahead he had to basically stop on the outside line uh, to not cause a crash but uh, yeah, we did get that move done nicely. Now up the inside of Latifi, and that is a very clean move. Good, good job, nice overtake. Uh, into the first corner, Latifi uh, may not agree, but uh, nonetheless, we have moved up 
uh, ahead of him. Here's the replay of that one. That's uh, very nicely done there. Uh, Latifi had to uh, back out on the exit, obviously. Uh, no space uh, there. Now Ocon is challenging Latifi around the outside and now to the inside of Casino. Latifi, though, trying to come back towards Mirabeau and he's actually got the nose ahead. They're still running side by side as they head towards the hairpin. Ocon is eventually going to uh, get a full car ahead and Latifi's going to tuck back into line. So uh, Latifi losing two places there, but he just certainly did not go down uh, without a fight in that Williams car. But uh, now, as uh, we continue on, we're putting pressure on down the inside of Lando Norris, just about, just almost uh, hitting the back of him with the front wing there. But we're side by side as we head up the hill, and now we'll uh, just about get ahead of Lando Norris. That was a nice move on uh, the British driver, and uh, we've moved ourselves up another position. There's the replay. Uh, side by side up the hill is always a little bit uh, sketchy and now down the inside of Grosjean into Mirabeau and this is very tight on uh, side by side through this twisty section of the track we're both just about scraping the walls but we make the move around the outside of the hairpin and that is a really nice move on Romain Grosjean uh, very respectful uh, from him as well to uh, not make any uh, significant contact there was a bit of a bump as uh, the track uh, sort of pinches there and maybe a slight graze there as well as uh, our lines uh, sort of just naturally uh, converge at that point but uh, given uh, how long we're battling side by side uh, around one of the narrowest parts uh, of the track it's you know it's a single line part of the track no doubt about it but uh, yes very good racing uh, with Grosjean there and uh, now we're catching up to Kimi Raikkonen so let's see if we can make the move on him in uh, a somewhat easier way down the inside into Mirabeau and uh, we go a lot deeper this time to make sure we cover him off and get the move done so we don't have to run side by side uh, through the hairpin we go a bit deep into the hairpin but Raikkonen's not going to be able to come back at us and uh, once again here is the replay uh, of that move as uh, we just got a nice run uh, out of the casino and uh, we just had to send it and uh, just make sure we covered him off Raikkonen uh, didn't have any space to come back at us uh, unlike Grosjean who uh, was able to maintain the position uh, alongside us but uh, that was a nice enough move uh, for us we had to uh, go very late uh, on the brakes but uh, we have been uh, making our way through the field uh, quite nicely in this one and uh, we'll see if we can uh, continue this march forwards we have to uh, slow down and uh, let past uh, Max Verstappen and Valtteri Bottas. Verstappen is in the lead at the moment, but he is yet to stop. Bottas uh, and Hamilton have made stops, but so uh, Bottas is the effective leader. Verstappen uh, is uh, holding him up a bit on old tyres, but uh, as we uh, continue on, Kevin Magnussen uh, makes his stop. We get that position, and uh, that moves us uh, very close to the points, actually, uh, in this race. So uh, despite having to make an early pit stop, uh, we are in uh, pretty good stead. We're up into P10 now, so we are into the points, uh, as a matter of fact. And uh, we have to uh, watch out for Hamilton behind as he's going up the inside uh, at the back. And he's not actually... To car in front is seconds. He didn't actually commit to it there, and we had to run side by side through to back. So uh, that was very awkward uh, there as uh, we were getting lapped by Hamilton. But he, uh, yeah, he was... Just uh, very cautious there, so uh, yeah, that uh, ended up costing us both uh, a bunch of time, but uh, eventually, obviously, Hamilton uh, does get ahead, but uh, Danny Fiat comes in uh, for his uh, one and only stop onto the hard tyres, and he is away and clear, and uh, we are way back here at the Nouvelle Chicane, so uh, Fiat is a long way ahead of us in this race, so uh, we've lost a lot of time uh, in this phase of the race. Uh, some of that uh, is from the blue flags but we just haven't had the pace today uh, it's as simple as that and uh, if it, once Kofiat made a stop that kind of showed uh, to me how much how much we didn't really have in this race and uh, there goes Max Verstappen once again after he's made uh, his uh, final stop and uh, now uh, this is uh, I think Antonio Giovinazzi uh, for his stop and uh, he is uh, really the only car ahead of us that uh, we're in any uh, kind of range of and as he uh, comes out of pit lane we're already clear and uh, heading up uh, towards the casino so uh, as things stand we're in P9 we go for a spin on that corner once again but uh, thankfully we've got a gap behind us uh, before Kevin Magnussen but uh, P9 at the moment lap 55 
So uh, we're in good stead uh, for uh, a couple of points uh, in this race as we uh, have a look at the replay. Typical incident at that corner, just clipping the inside wall with the left rear. And uh, we go for a spin. Cost us a bit of time, but uh, thankfully again we had the gap to Magnussen. Uh, not to worry about that too much. So uh, as we continue on, uh, we have to... Gap to teammate ahead is 39.0 seconds. Have to uh, give up the position there to Charles Leclerc and uh, Magnussen uh, almost taking advantage here. He had a big, long, hard look down the inside. Eventually uh, had to bail out of it. So uh, yeah, not... Uh, not great for Magnussen there, but we have to go very slow around the outside here. I was trying to let uh, the Ferrari pass to, of Sebastian Vettel, and uh, he just wouldn't go. And uh, that uh, has cost me a bunch of time. There's Ricardo as well. Uh, we have to let him pass, but uh, this uh, unknowns to me at the time caused all kinds of chaos behind. Uh, you can see there, just Vettel not being able to uh, turn the corner. There is Kevin Magnussen. We have broken. Uh, his AI it seems. Uh, Alfa Romeo's are uh, having some trouble there. There is Lance Stroll uh, navigating his way through. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, yeah, both of the Alphas there uh, having some issues there. I think is uh, Alex Albon. Bottas is involved as well. The race leader is uh, involved in this incident. It's a car park at the hairpin. And uh, everyone is uh, invited to the party it seems and uh, it will, all sorts of uh, chaos is ensuing. There's a Williams on its way too, and uh, I'm trying to find a good camera angle of this, but uh, yeah, Albon is blocking the track at the moment. Bottas has absolutely nowhere to go. The race leader is just burning a whole bunch of time. Meanwhile, we are along the main straight. That's how long this uh, has been going on for. So uh, the virtual safety car uh, was called, but uh, by the time we get around uh, through the hairpin, uh, everything is all clear. VSC ending, we're going green. Maintain positive delta until the green flags. So, uh, yeah. It uh, didn't uh, have uh, a major effect uh, on our race, ironically enough, uh, given that we uh, semi-caused the incident. Uh, Magnuson, uh, I'm not sure what he was doing, but uh, he's the uh, first car that blocked the road. Here's the race director, though. And uh, I'm not even going to try and read out everything that's there, but uh, Albon with uh, a whole host of penalties along with Carlos Sainz. The turbocharger is on its last legs. Let's try to keep mileage on it to a minimum. So uh, the reason I mentioned Sainz is Kvyat uh, was overtaken by Sainz in uh, all that mess. Gap to car in front is 22.8 seconds. So uh, the fact that Sainz has a penalty gives Kvyat some hope of uh, reclaiming that seventh position that he lost. But uh, as you just heard there, we've got now turbo wear as well. We're running an old engine. Uh, this is still our first column of engine parts. This is the last race we'll be doing uh, on this uh, on this engine. Uh, then we'll just reserve it for practice. But uh, I think both the ICE and the turbo are very, very worn uh, at this point. So it is costing us some performance in this race. But uh, anyway, as we continue on, uh, was that a hit again uh, into that corner? Uh, we'll go uh, on board with Kevin Magnussen, and it, it was. That's damage there for Kevin Magnussen on the, on the uh, right front of uh, the front wing there. And uh, Magnussen uh, giving us a whack, and now he's in for another stop to uh, change the front wing. So uh, Magnussen, uh, a little bit aggressive there as uh, our lines uh, converged heading into the, uh, the chicane. But uh, a new front wing in order for Kevin Magnussen, and that's going to drop him out of the points and uh, out of contention in this race. So it's a disaster for Haas uh, in this one. Uh, Grosjean uh, now leads the way for them. But uh, next up uh, behind us is Lance Stroll. But we've got a puncture on our front left tyre, and that is going to absolutely destroy our race. Stroll has made the move down the inside, but the. A new strategy is available on the MFD. Uh, what has just happened? This, that come up so suddenly. The left front is just gone. The race is over. We're gonna we're gonna have to make a stop. We're gonna drop out of the points. We've already uh, dropped down into tenth. And uh, well, I don't really know what happened there. I think the tire was just so worn. Uh, we've been running on it for so long that it's just gone. And uh, that took me by a surprise uh, as much as anyone. Um, just the tire just went. And uh, Lance Stroll straight away uh, gets past us. And uh, that's our race over. We're done. We need to make a stop. We're going to come out in basically last position 
and uh, blue flag, blue flag. yeah we have to uh, as well as trying to even keep the car on the road we have to worry about blue flags uh, as well trying to control this absolute monster of a car when we've got uh, three wheels effectively and uh, just to add insult to injury when the AI uh, takes over in the pit lane we go incredibly slowly for a while there but uh, anyway we uh, do eventually <laughs> get to our pit box and uh, get a new set of tyres on and we're on our way uh, once again in this race but uh, around this time the uh, recording cut out and I didn't realise so uh, the rest of this race uh, was recorded uh, from the replay cameras but uh, that shouldn't uh, affect uh, too much but uh, anyway uh, we get back on circuit once again and uh, we set our sights on uh, the next group of cars. I think we're in about 18th position uh, at this point and uh, we need to try and overtake the Williams cars basically. That's really the goal uh, for the rest of this race. We send one up the inside of George Russell but uh, we make contact there and Russell maintains a position. We damage our front wing and uh, that has... Uh, made this uh, job significantly harder we go for it again and we have a big slide that time and uh, it's literally exactly the same incident but uh, as we head up the hill we are right behind George Russell and through this left hand we have some mega pace round the outside to the inside of Casino and we just about squeeze through and make the move on George Russell he tries to come back down the inside into Mirabeau we squeeze him into the wall slightly there and uh, that could be damage for his front wing as well and uh, we uh, have in uh, not the cleanest fashion made our way ahead of George Russell but uh, moving on from that uh, this is uh, the driver of the day by a mile Valtteri Bottas has absolutely dominated this race and uh, he is now on his final lap of uh, the Monaco Grand Prix lap 78 of uh, this absolute marathon uh, of a race he survived the carnage at the hairpin as uh, Albon uh, tried his best to uh, stop him uh, from completing any further laps but uh, to no avail as Valtteri Bottas uh, comes towards the finish line to win the Monaco Grand Prix. A superb drive from Valtteri Bottas and uh, he will close the gap in the championship to eight points to Lewis Hamilton with that result and uh, that is a mega mega drive from him. Meanwhile uh, we are two laps behind heading through the swimming pool section and uh, there is Nicholas Latifi up ahead. We weren't able to catch him. So, uh, yeah, as we... Okay, you have some front wing damage, but not enough to justify a stop in the remaining Helpful, Jeff. As we come across the line to finish the race in 17th right, position. Take care of the car on the way in. Uh, what could have been in this one if the tyres lasted just a few laps longer? But, uh... Yeah. Disaster. Yes, another historic win under their belts. Well done to the team at Mercedes. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. So it's Valtteri Bottas who takes the race win here in Monaco. What a day for him and for Mercedes. A 1-2 finish and Max Verstappen brings home third for Red Bull. championship here's how things look in the driver's table despite the best efforts of our championship leader that lead has taken a bit of a knock today now let's discuss Ants. who would you say is a contender for driver of the day that's got to be the flying fin wait how many flying fins have we had now anyway i'm talking about bottas this time just great raw speed and a good job in traffic as well. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Another team that will be satisfied with this Grand Prix is Alfa Romeo, whose good result moves them further up the championship. Well, Ants, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. So, thanks to the hard work of Denik Fiat in this race, finishing in eighth position.
Uh, we do overtake racing points in uh, the standings, but uh, yeah, we could have got uh, an extra couple of points for the team, but uh, that has gone down the drain. Uh, no highlights package because uh, I used a mid-session save, mid save uh, about a third of the a third of the way uh, through the race but uh, anyway uh, it all just went wrong there puncture on the front left and yeah not too much else to say it uh, is uh, just a, a sour feeling at the end of uh, the Monaco Grand Prix we were running you know, up in the points we could have uh, brought home two points for the team and uh, of course for our own drivers championship but uh, yeah, it's uh, gotten away from us, and uh, yeah, we just pushed the two, the pushed the tires too hard for too long. Uh, the strategy said, like, the strategy said that would be impossible, and uh, I think uh, at the time the front left uh, blew up. The the wear was around 80 something, 86 percent, or. Uh, or it might not have been that bad. It would have been that bad by the end of the race. Uh, I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, even if we did finish, the tyre uh, would have been, it would have had no grip left uh, by the end. But, uh, yeah, we'll just have to move on to the next one and, yeah, just uh, try and go for more then. But uh, talking about the other drivers in this race, um, uh, I think Lance Stroll actually uh, had to change his front wing, so he did a good job to get back up into the points, ending up finishing ninth uh, after our issues. Uh, Valtteri Bottas, despite getting caught up in uh, Albon's incident at uh, the hairpin, uh, he uh, managed to take the win. He closes up to Hamilton in uh, the in the championship. The gap is now eight points uh, from Hamilton to Bottas, so uh, this could be a bit of a turning point. Bottas has been closing the gap recently, so uh, maybe. Uh, he can uh, continue that. Uh, obviously, Baku uh, is a track he's done well at in the past, so uh, it will be interesting to see uh, if he can perform there and uh, turn his championship around. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. What was your teammate's secret to success today? Uh, not blowing up his front left, uh, for one thing. But uh, other than that, uh, he drove very quickly today and... Uh, yeah, we just couldn't match his pace. He was uh, very fast, very consistent, and uh, yeah, we just couldn't match it today. Do you have any comments about the collisions? Uh, we, yeah, we tried to make a few aggressive moves at the end there. That was a bit of frustration getting, uh, getting into it there, but uh, we'll move on. Well, thanks anyway. Thank you, Claire. So that brings the Monaco Grand Prix weekend uh, to a close. Three all with Raikkonen on uh, the rivalry this round, but uh, we've got that more or less locked in at this point. I don't think there's any way Raikkonen uh, can win, or uh, not within reason anyway. Not a lot of acclaim coming out of this event, obviously, uh, for us. But uh, anyway, back to HQ. We get a whole host of upgrades uh, onto the car. Three uh, successfully uh, applied there. But uh, we go to the R&D screen. This is recorded uh, between practice and qualifying. And you can see uh, we're kind of locked in on the engine and uh, aero side of things. So the only uh, area we have to work on uh, is uh, chassis. We don't really need any more uh, reliability at this point. We could, but uh, honestly, I'm more worried about the pace of the car uh, at this point. We can always take a grid penalty at uh, uh, maybe a round where uh, we don't have... Uh, high hopes, maybe hungry, and uh, just have a bit of a throwaway round. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I would. I don't want to uh, take. I don't want to take a penalty at uh, a strong circuit like Monza, even though it is easy to overtake there. Uh, I don't want to uh, make life more difficult than it needs to be on a, a track where we could score big points. So uh, we'll investigate that later. But uh, yeah, as for R and D. And uh, what I'm meant to be talking about right now, we're going to go for a tyre wear upgrade. And uh, that will uh, hopefully uh, avoid any incidents uh, like what we had in this one. And uh, we don't have enough resource points to go for anything else. But uh, back to uh, HQ after the race. And uh, we do have enough resource points to go for another upgrade. So uh, I'm going to go for uh, the other minor chassis upgrade we have available. I think it was weight uh, reduction. 
and uh, that's uh, about all there is uh, for this episode. So, uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Thank you, and goodbye.